VIP Access. VIP Access with Aniko on Africa Loud. Welcome back to VIP Access. This is the ELS podcast on music and culture from this side of the continent. It's always an honor for me to be here and thank you so much for coming through to check out my guests this week. If you've been around from day one, you know we love art, culture, entertainment and music. We love dope artists. And today I have a special guest in the building. Before I introduce my special guest, I want to thank Nairobi Street Kitchen for giving us their home once again. The person I'm about to interview introduced to us really dope albums, including Afrovision, Zeno, and most recently, Umuzi. You probably know who I'm talking about. He's all about light, and I'm very honored to be hosting none other than Muzi. <laughs> Hello. Mutare, you know what we, we, we need. Bam, How are you, Muzi? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to VAP Access. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's nice. It's so good to see you here. It's so good mm. to have you in Kenya. Yeah, yeah. I've been I've been having like a really good time. Um it's been nice. We've been like checking out new spots with my friends and like trying to see other musicians also and like trying to see other people perform. So yeah, it's been really cool, yeah. I don't even know where to start. So first of all, I got introduced to you by my friend Provo of okay. Moja Sounds. Yeah. When they came over to South Africa last year and um, he was like, do you know an artist called Muzi? Yeah. And I was like, I'm not sure. And then when I check out your music, I'm like, oh my God, this is really one of the dopest African artists and global artists, period. You are so freaking dope. Thank you. Damn. <laughs> Thank you. And then you kind of um, remind me of Blinky Bill, who's a Kenyan artist, yeah. who's also very different, very eclectic. Yeah, do you get that a lot? Yeah. Of, yeah. of, of late, you're getting that. Yeah, so a lot of people like um, have actually like sent me like his stuff before. So I've checked out his stuff like online. Mm. I think we've both checked each other out, but we hadn't really met until this trip. So it was really cool to just like even meet him, get to talk to him. And see him DJ also, you know, so mm. yeah, it was nice. Mm. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, okay, so those who are listening and watching, you know how I always do, I always paint a picture to who I'm sitting next to or who I'm interviewing. In case you don't know much about him, I always have to share what I know about them. So Muzi is a really dope artist from South Africa. He has a way of blending urban modern sounds with African genres like Maskandi, Kwaito, House. His music is very groovy. And he has been co-signed by such amazing artists, including Black Coffee, Chris Martin of Coldplay, Stormzy, Blinky Bill, even me, of course, signed him. So it's really dope to have Mozi here. You know, he actually was playing at Afropunk Paris. Yes. And that's when Chris Martin came up to you. Yes. And so, I'm just like, that's such yeah. a legendary thing. We had met before in, in South Africa. I didn't know that he was at the show. I didn't know that he was there like to 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 check out like Afropunk uh, Paris. So after I'd finished performing, um he he had been waiting for me, like like a backstage. <laughs> like it was like just a crazy night, really. But yeah, he 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 really loved the show that I did and then that's how we started working together because they wanted a remix for Coldplay at the time. And yeah, for a song called Orphans, and then I was able to do a remix for the men. Mm. But like, it was just like really cool how I, how I I got to see him again. Yeah. yeah, and now he features in your recent album Umuzi. Yeah, in the song Queen. Yes. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Um. Yeah. I, oh, oh, sorry to cut you off. Uh, I think, yeah, like he features on the song Queen, and even how that's happened, like it's been. I don't know, man. Like. It's been very like natural, like natural progression and mm. organic in terms of how I guess our working relationship has come to like be because it's in in many ways it's also more than just like a, like us working together as musicians. It's also he's also just a really cool guy. Mm. Um, so I I think I sent him the song because I I had written like the the chorus and in, in like with, in Zulu. But obviously, I, I don't know, for some reason, it just started sounding like his voice would sound better on there than my mm. my voice would. So then I asked him if he could, like, jump on it, and and he did. Mm. So, yeah, so that that was really good, like, a result. But it came just over, like, text. So mm. it was just like, yo, dog, I've got this idea. Um, if you're keen, then we can do it. And then he did do it. Mm. So, yeah. 
You are not just a musician and a performer, but also a really dope music producer. And I think mm. I overheard you saying at an interview that that's the first thing that came natural to you. You're yeah. first a producer. Are you able to explain to me and to, to um, like the process of your craft? Where does it start and um, how do you define yourself? Uh, I like not to define myself, you Ooh, know. I like um, that answer. Yeah, Ooh. I just like creating like freely, um, and and following my feelings mm. or my my. I'm emotionally driven when it comes to my arts, really. Um, so yeah, I'm a music producer first. Like I like making beats. I like playing around with sounds. I like sound designing. Like. Yeah, I just like sound, you know, even now, like all of these things, that I'm, he I'm hearing things, I hear things differently, yeah, you know, like, yeah. so um, it's all music to me and I just like playing around with it. So first and foremost, it's just that I just like, I'm a nerd for anything that's sound. Mm. Um, and then, so through that, through making beats, I started writing like, I guess, lyrics over them to see it. First of all, as like an idea for an artist, really, I wasn't I wasn't writing them for myself. I was writing them for whoever that I'd give the beat to. And then as years went on, I guess I got more confidence with having my own voice on there and actually starting to sing more or or whatever it is that I do. I don't know. <laughs> I just think it sounds really cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's all been like a natural like progression for me. Like mm -hmm. nothing has been really planned out. It's just more like oh this makes sense at this level of like my career or whatnot mm. what so, mm. yeah. i want to talk about your most recent album umuzi yeah, and uh, i was very <sighs> lucky to be among a few people who had a chance to experience the, mu the, the, the music and the album before it was released yeah. when you came to nairobi for a listening um party event which was really dope yeah. i love that there's a very not a very not a very well thought through but sort of kind of like um there's a sequence of inspirations and feelings and emotions from the top to the bottom. Yeah. So this, the album is inspired by, you know, loss, you know, yeah. love, inspiration, just life's ups and downs and very personal to you. But what I found very interesting was this is a personal album to you. But once I was able to listen to it, I kind of felt like your the way you encompass your sound and emotions and lyrics and everything in a, in a body of work, I kind of felt like it connects the listener, connects me to a people, to mm. a community, like some of the sounds I could hear them and imagine, I see pictures. So, yeah. and, and I think you described this as you love to make cinematic sound. So if yeah. you could expound that to me. Yeah, um, I, uh, I think this comes it comes mostly from like I guess my childhood and like how we grow up like when like one of my favorite things would be to be part of like a traditional ceremony when mm. there's like drums and people are singing and we're all singing and we're happy it always used to sound like surround sound to me like it's like home theater in a yes, way yes, yes. but I'd never heard that on like wax I'd never heard it on like songs mm. I, so I knew I guess a wider palette I don't know I don't know how to put it of of like the music felt bigger in real life than it ever did on a CD yes. or a cassette, especially when it came to like uh, like traditional like African music. Yeah, it wouldn't sound as big on an album to me mm. than it would when someone was like there and we were doing it in real life. So I started chasing that. I wanted to make it sound cinematic here, you know, the same way it does when when or the same way it did when I was a kid. Mm. But I felt like the sound was coming from everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? um, Collecting all the sounds yeah. around you and trying to put them into some sort of thing that makes sense. Trying to, yeah, trying to, trying to make it like make sense with all the, I guess, limitations of how how much I can push a song of course, technically. Of you course. know. So so being able to figure that out has been like a, an interesting process for me. Um, being able to, I guess, bend my voice and do these things so that like it sounds like that and being able to engineer myself and how I sound to sound like these crowds and these, like big crowds of people. That's dope. Like, I that's... mean, how, how do you actually do it? <laughs> like you just do... Oh, Trace Secrets. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. do, you, do you have to get like a group of individuals or do you just have to do so many voices and then up them up and... Yeah, like... Explain like, the process. I used to... Um, <laughs> I, I like... 
like I like finding out how many different voices I can do. Like mm-hmm. how many different voices I can sound like. Um, can I do a particular low end, like or bassy vocal? Can I do something super high pitch and falsetto or whatever? Like, like I I I like finding out mm. about my own voice. So it's it's always cool to play around with like how I actually sound with like a eh, 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 or whatever, whatever <laughs> you know. Like just like being able to play around and find, and then usually I'll find something that sounds. The, exactly the way I mentioned yeah, it. It must be fun. You know, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun because I'm trying to hear... I've never heard vocals being, like, done that way. Yeah. You know? And I'm also trying to, I guess, add a little bit of nerdy sound engineering. Like, add, like, a percentage to that. Of like, oh, course. you can actually do that to your vocals or you can actually do that to your music. Um, Just being creative. Yeah, I just like playing around with it. That's dope. So how do you interpret your that music into a live performance? Yeah. Do you always do all live or is it kind of half live? Because I imagine mm. there's a lot of sound that's already engineered that can also be put into the live performance. Yeah. How, how do you interpret that into the live? Um, I like DJing. Okay. So okay. I, I DJ and perform live at the same time. Nice. So I like the whole... Because I DJ mostly my own songs, but I'm also singing in my own That's songs. Dope. So sometimes I'll play the song and then usually there's a mic and I'll perform it because I also just like being on stage mm. performing. Um, so I, I like that whole thing of like DJing and performing at the same time. Yeah. I like I like being on edge in that way. Yeah. Because it feels like even when I'm on stage, I'm still creating of a layer, you know, of on course. top of that. So yeah. um yeah, so that's how I usually I translate it live. Obviously, I think as time goes, I'd want to add more lights mm. to it or make it like a bigger show than mm. what it is, than just me. Like, even the way it looks or feels, I want it to be like bigger than life, you know? Um, yeah. But yeah, it's a one-man show and I I just have fun on stage. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see you on stage because you give off just really amazing energy. It's like, crazy. I can I can tell I I mean I feel the energy right now I was at your listening party and yeah. just your songs it's not just you but just what you create as well so if yeah. I didn't meet you I still feel like that from your music and I think it's a bonus when I meet you or when someone comes to see you performing yeah um and I wanted to talk about two specific singles from your album yeah. Light and uh, M Tunzini what does yeah. M Tunzini mean uh M Tunzini the word uh, if you directly translate it, means in the shadow. Uh, because Imtunzini, the place, is a place that has a lot of trees. Okay. So it's like people will go there to be in the shadow. Yeah. Um, but the place also plays a, um, a very significant role in, I guess, my upbringing. Like we used to go there. It's a coastal town that's close to Empangeni, where I'm from. Mm. Um, so we used to go there sometimes to the ocean to like have fun, whatever, with the family. Uh, so it just felt like a cool place to to talk about like not only just like my parents' story in it, but just how um, proud I am that I come from Mpangeni. Mm. And yeah, just like giving a <laughs> a nod to people that come from that side. Of you course, know? Yeah. of course. I mean, tell me about the creative process of making these videos because the video itself is quite cinematic for lack of a better word. Like, yeah. you know, you see the the views, like the forest and then there's the ocean or whatever, yeah. the water and the, <laughs> the, the long, you know, road, road yeah. and the car. Yeah. It's just, it's very, I, I want to say it's simple, but leaves a very um, profound yeah. feeling and effect. And yeah. then, Sometimes I see you in the video, even in, in like a video of light. It's not so complicated. It's just yeah. Muzi and his surrounding. But the way you are jamming, you know, the yeah. way you move. Yeah. Hey, Muzi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, teach me how to move like that. Oh, Sam, I don't even think I could dance. Like, I just, I just like, I just like vibing to it. Um, <laughs> but I, I guess with the, with the videos, you, you're right. Like, my whole point is to always make it simple. Okay. But, like, I wanted to... I, I didn't want to dress it up too much, you know? I just wanted... I wanted black people to just be in mm. terms of art. You know, sometimes, like, you have to dress it up too much. You have to look, yeah. like, super clean, yeah, and the yeah, video yeah. has to be super clean, and you have to look, like, rich <laughs> or whatever. And to me, like, I know that it's part of, like, perception and whatnot, but it doesn't really reflect my real life. Mm. So I wanted something that felt more just, like, something that you'd 
you know when 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 you're just driving over a bridge you in your mind it's like mundane it's just yeah. something that maybe you might be doing every day yes but as soon as you change your perspective on the same place like you're cutting oh what's wrong you know that's confusing oh oh sorry okay. so like but what oh. let let him finish his thought process please can he finish okay so uh, yeah so like um the cool thing is that you you could do something every day and find it as a mundane experience you know but as soon as you change your perspective on it as soon as you mm. add a drone to it as soon as you add like a different viewpoint to it yes. it looks big and it looks majestic it's all about perspective that's it i was yeah. ju- i was just driving a car but the way i wanted to make it look was that yeah you're just driving a car i'm just doing an errand i'm going to the woods like i'm just in the woods but you've never seen the woods like this yeah. you've never seen a car you know like i, I just wanted to try and do that especially yeah. as a, a a dude from empangin yeah you know i've never seen someone and of that, course the car is mentioned in the in the in the song and you have yeah. the same car it's a cree yeah cresida cresida yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's crazy like like everything pop 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 <laughs> all boxes ticked you know but i just wanted to at the end like just show that it doesn't have to be complicated or too you know that's can, dope simple arts is usually that's the best that's dope that's dope that Muzi, can we yeah. also talk about light i i found yeah. it very beautiful that the song is so groovy and you're really jamming in the video but yeah. when you spoke about the message um or the inspiration of the song which was inspired by your mommy yeah. um you know lo- losing your mom and finding back yourself and living in her light i found yeah. that very interesting that this is that kind of emotion, but you translated it into such a groovy jam. Yeah. And uh, now that I have the backstory, when I hear the song, it even hits different because yeah. it's it's a it's kind of like a celebration now. So tell me about naming the song that, making it that groovy, yeah. and it being about losing your mom. Um, I think, I I think for me, that's how like I remember her. You know, like, um, and, uh, yeah, it's just like, it's just like a dope beat, you know, it's just like, it's nice. I remember her as a super, like, dope person, and um, I wanted to create a song that, to me, felt like light, to me, felt like it was, like, opening up skies, in a way. Um, So, it just felt like a really good letter for her, you know, I like, my music is very much about, like, family and about love and you know and about like my mental health and where i'm at in my life um so i had i had made an uh an ep called mama ep where i was talking about like how hurt i was and all these things and um i think lights is kind of like the aftermath of that Mm. like after the healing has happened and all of that and then i get to i guess see her or see my pain with all of with, with losing her like more clearly mm. um and yeah so it it's more of a celebratory song yeah in, in that sense yeah yeah I'm, I'm sure you get this question a lot but how how do you feel you've been able how to to not heal but just kind of uh deal with the loss of your mom because it's not something you heal and it's over you know i'm sure yeah. there's certain times when there's a trigger and you miss her so much or something but yeah. how have you dealt with that loss up to this moment where you were able to come back to yourself come back to singing because yeah. there was even a break i think around two years and everybody was like come back muzi come back muzi but yeah. you know you were going through a lot of things yourself yeah i um i had to be kind enough to, uh, to myself and like to give myself time to just like to just be, man. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's like you you always have to be stuck on your job or yeah. what you're trying to do and all of that. And like, um, at the time for me, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense to drop music. I just wanted to be with my daughter mm. and I just wanted to like just heal and go through it and not run away from all of these like emotions. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's exactly what I did. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I just, I just chilled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just chilled and um, <laughs> I started creating. I, I, I never want to feel like there's pressure from yeah. the world for me to, yeah. uh, I guess, do stuff. Yeah. Um. So I don't, I don't, I, I don't even like think about things mm. like that. So, uh, I just decided to chill. 
and be with my kid and create as as the as the gods wanted. Yes. As the gods of art wanted. Yes. I, I didn't go and try to make something. I just wait wait it out. Mm. And when it comes, it's like when it's there, it's there. I create. When it's not there, I'm not creating. Um, and I guess that sense of uh, moving myself, removing myself from my career, and finding out that I'm actually human outside of what I do, that I'm still like a complete human being and I'm enough, like made me heal better because mm. I wasn't so attached to how. I presented to the world or how or what I was doing or whatever, how successful I am, whatever. I didn't care about all of that anymore. I just cared if I was okay and if the people around me were okay. So that whole time to heal led to me writing this album. Yeah. Yeah. And and so would you say that the album Umuzi is your most personal work to date? Yeah, yeah, I'd say that because I, I think it's the one where I found the right language to express some things. Um, and yeah, I probably, I've, I, my music has always been personal in a way, but like I've really found, uh, I keep on finding better language yeah. to like explain it or yeah, yeah, to yeah. like express, uh, to express it. And yeah, I'm, I love all my albums, but I, I love this one too, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Very are, there, are there particular favorites? For you from this album, I love the the song with the kids. What oh is yeah, it Ikakas, Ikakas. Oh yeah. my god, so cool! I have. What's I, the story of the making of this? Like, how do you make oh, that? Because also um, it, that also has the cinematic yeah, effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was every time I go back home, um, and I go back with uh, Zeno, my daughter, like. We usually, like, I usually take the kids and we go to the ocean. So Because nice. I love going to the ocean. And so, like, um, but they do too, you know. So, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of putting them on <laughs> with regards to, like, how dope going to the ocean is. Um, so, we usually go there. And when we're coming back, like, we'll be singing songs on the road trip. Like, so going nice. back home or whatever. So, one time, like, we're, like, making these songs and we're, like, freestyling. And then... Uh, we eventually like make the they start singing the part that, I, that 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 eventually gets on the song. I'm like, okay, guys, when we get home, that's what we record. <laughs> <laughs> so I set up like a little studio thing, like I hang the mic on like my mom's like uh, cupboard in the kitchen yeah. or whatever, and we just record the song. We have wow. fun, and then I end up using um, those vocals to make ikakas. So yeah, yeah, that was that was I think in terms of having fun and. And also just like, just like having fun with the kids, you yeah. know, with my family. Like, so that one, yeah, that one was a, a lot of fun to, to That's make. really cool. That's really cool. Um, so if you look back at your albums, like Afrovision, yeah. you spoke about your daughter, Zeno. There's an album called Zeno. Yeah. And now um, Umuzi. Yeah. What would you say has been the transition between these albums? Um, Time, you know, like, yeah. like I, I feel like they're all part of the same, like, they're all part of the same story, but yes. I'm talking about that story in different pockets, you of know, course. and I'm trying to express it in, in all of these different ways. Um, but I just think it's time, man. Like the more I grow, the more I guess uh, fine tune my skill set gets. And then I, I get to express it differently and maybe in a more like sharper yes. fashion, yes. you know? Uh, so yeah, it's just that it's just about making something that just like, can I swear? Yes, of course. Just about making something that fucks you up, man. Like <laughs> <laughs> we're all about like creating, you know? Like like I love I love creating and I feel like creating is being able to take things that you've seen and things that you're inspired by yeah. and like twist them in a way that you make them your own. Of course. And in that sense, when people experience it, it it like it just fucks them up yeah. in the best way possible. <laughs> so I like making art that like what the hell is it to oh shit? You know, I like I like that. Um oh, moosey, so, moosey, moosey. <laughs> so so yeah. So as long as as long as that's happening, I think I think each album keeps doing that. It's like I'm not gonna make what you expect me to make. Yeah. I'm gonna make what I wanna make. See, see, that's what I love about you, and that's where I that's the next question I wanted to ask. Like I there's different schools of thoughts and different type of artists. There's 
one school of thought and the other one and you're like left yeah, I'm <laughs> and really. the other people are right or vice versa. Yeah. Um, you're just so defiant and I always love defiant you know people the defiant yeah. ones like you and sometimes even as a music publicist i meet artists and they ask me things like is it right that i should do this yeah. do you think i should do this someone asked me the other day like um, i I'm a, I'm, a, i'm a music producer and i'm a chef yeah. so do you think i should have on my bio uh, saying i'm a chef and i'm a music producer and i told him like i think if you're sending your bio to the hospitality mm. ho- industry and hotels they probably won't care that you're a dj but mm. i mean they might mm. so i actually told him i think you need to decide how you want to mm. present yourself if you want to say i'm a dj and a chef so be it so mm. it's there's no right you know you are the one to define what's your right and i feel like a lot of people and artists especially struggle with what do people think of me what do they expect of me da da da, da. but you just said here like I just do what the gods of arts want yeah. me to do and I just do what I feel like doing depending on where my inspiration or emotion takes me. Yeah. So I think it's such a bold stance. Um and I I just want to know how I mean how do you do it? How do yeah. you do it because I think a lot of artists wish to get to this level where they're just okay with themselves and just not get so influenced by everything there's just yeah. so much noise around us yeah. and that's why a lot of artists even say i don't listen to other music yeah. or i don't follow social media so for you how do you protect you know yeah. music headspace art and craft um i i don't get my validation from my side um so it's i'd never looking at what ha- what's happening in the market uh, above all i understand that i'm having a real human experience mm-hmm. and that's the thing i'm more so like interested in is how i am as a human being like and i think mm-hmm. as long as i search for that it makes me like a better artist of course um me my like search for being like a better human being makes me a better dad makes me be like proud of the real things in my life um and that's how I've kind of been conditioned mm. by my mom because of how like I guess we grew up and stuff uh and yeah I'm I'm okay with the man like like I've like all of that confidence all of those talks yeah, yeah, like yeah. I came out into the world Yeah. Already like that because I because I got so much of it at home. Of course. You know, even to a point where when I when I drop out of school and like my my mom and I don't get along, it's because of what she taught me. We don't get along because I am that confident kid that she was trying to make me be. Right. So I became so confident even to her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh that no. That you stood yeah, up for no, yourself yeah. as a kiddo. Yeah, you taught me how I to stand that. up for myself. I'm gonna stand up for I myself. I love that. Even if it's against you. Yeah. So I'm gonna disappoint you early. You yeah. know, so that we can get to like something that's real and 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 true between yeah. us, just on a relationship front. So yeah, I think I think that's that for me. It's not like like it's cool what other artists are doing, but I'm not really into what other artists are doing like that. Like I don't watch they moves like that i just like do my thing you know and for me i wanna because because i'm only gonna have this life once i want to be able to to express it as authentically yeah. as i possibly can and and then be out yeah <laughs> like everyone else i don't want to be out having lived something that isn't true to yeah. me yeah yeah the next thing i, I want to talk to you about was um, what got you interested in music um and being a like a publicist um I just loved music and I grew up in a household that people loved music so I grew yeah. up my father loved music my father died when I was younger but he really loved life entertainment and music so there was always music playing like the yeah. um Papa Wemba um yeah. Franco mm. a lot of lingala music my mom loved Brenda Farsi you know the the, fe- the the strong females yeah. Miriam Makeba mm. you know that time I think dope african music actually was either coming f- in kenya was yeah. either coming from congo or from south southern africa mm. so i don't know we just didn't know like dope older kenyan music we just used to take in a lot of south african and and i mean i guess that's fine so mm. that's how i started loving music then my sister siblings really love like r&b hip hop tupac i was like the 10 year old rapping to tupac and yeah. singing alia songs and r kelly yeah Yeah so 
back then was really great. So, so I just grew up in a household that really loved music, arts, and culture. And then I come from a small town called Molo. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's a very small town, so we didn't have cable TV. And so my family had a, uh, a library of sorts yeah. because there was no cable TV, there was no streaming then. So we used to have cassettes mm-hmm. with uh, you know, music videos, MTV stuff. And so people would come pay yeah. to borrow the cassette <laughs> for four days and bring yes. it back. So, so that's how I got to know, not got to know, but really started loving arts and culture. Mm-hmm. And then um, I only found out recently, like, um, two weeks ago that my grandmother was a musician and I didn't know this. Oh. My mother didn't even know this. So, yeah. so the, 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 the mother of my dad, when, when we all met her, she was like just this church going person and um, she used to sell alcohol, like illicit mm. brew. Yeah. That's how we knew her. And so I met an older auntie when I went to the village and she said, oh, come here. I always wanted to talk to you. I always wanted to tell you something. I always wanted to tell you that you're from your lineage because yeah. your grandmother was a musician. And unfortunately, she had to stop singing when she got married because those days is just like when you would get married, then your life ends, whatever else you're doing. And now you're a mom. You're supposed to have children. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be at home and cook for the children or take care of them. So um, you can't really pursue your own dreams. Exactly. Like and and you, you and also you, you can't also not pursue your own dreams, but you can't even talk about it. Yeah. So she was bad from even t- t- remembering that she was a musician. So my auntie was telling me this. And even some of her younger siblings, my younger aunties, didn't even know that about their own mom because they spoke to oh, my wow. other auntie yeah. and said, did you know your mom was a musician? She said, I don't know. I said, but your bigger sister told me that. And she said, if she told you that, she's right because she used to talk to her great grandfather. Mm. So um, I, I guess when I got that little piece of information, a lot of things made sense to me because... I just love music so much and I love artists so much and I, I just want to listen and to promote it all night, every yeah. day. Like sometimes people ask me, why, when do you sleep? Because if I'm not sleeping, I'm reviewing music, listening and sharing dope posts about dope musicians. And I just tell them I sleep when I do, but you know yeah. what? I love what I do. I'm always up just doing what I love to do. So I guess it's, it's part of my heritage and it's part of the dreams my grandmother would have had for herself. For me to continue, um, you know, promoting artists or being who I want to be. It's not, it's not just about promoting artists, but just having the freedom to do you. Yeah. So it starts to make sense to me because sometimes I go to places when I travel and say, oh, you must be an artist. I'm like, no, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. Some people tell me, but you are. So yes, I'm, I'm not, but I am. Obviously, I'm an artist in my own right. The way I do my things, the way I express yeah, it's still myself. Right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, okay. That's the that's my short story. <laughs> what about you? Me with music. Yeah. Ah, it's always been in me, man. Yeah. If I'm being honest, even as you a know, young, young, young yeah, kid. Like when I look back at it, like I've just always had like five beats in my head, but I just never knew what it was when I was a kid. So when you were a kid, but, you, like, could, you, you could. I could like I, I used to bang on stuff. I used that's to what make... my grandmother used to do. So she was a mu- she was she was singing. Yeah. And she was playing the guitar. Yeah. And they had a box like thing that they would play like a drum, but it's like a metallic box. Yeah. So yeah. she would do that and uh-huh. people would come to and pay to see and her. Pay to see her. Yeah. Yo, yeah. So it's like it's like that, man. <laughs> it's just always been in me, really. Like I don't remember a time before hearing like like just, just feels like music has always been around. Um when I when I think about it. I start making it when I'm eleven, but what? You started making it at eleven? Yeah, I started making music at eleven. But like, which is like, yo, yeah, oh, oh, <laughs> so long. Um, but but it's always just like been in, in you, me. Yeah. in you. And and what kind of music do you love to hear or listen? What um, kind of artists like you know make you feel good? Because you make us feel good. But I'm wondering, like, if you want that for yourself, yeah, how, where'd you uh, get it? I used to listen to a lot of uh, Coldplay and a lot ah. of uh, Linkin Park. Also, ah. like, I and. And all the all of these groups would teach me different things. We used to listen to a lot of Daft Punk. Um, all of this, okay, all of this music okay. sounds that like that makes a lot of sense when I listen to your music now. Because even Coldplay have that kind of cinematic thing. Yeah, Daft Punk and it's thing. and it's positive. Very and it's positive. A, it's a, it's kind a good of enlightening. Message. Yeah, it's and a simple. good message. Yeah. Also, I like I like I like artists that 
that bring light into the world mm. and I want to be part of that. Mm. I don't want to I don't want to make art that helps people forget. I I don't like art that helps me forget. Like I like art that helps me remember something and run towards myself and not away from myself. Mm. So I try to make the same art that I love. Mm. Um and yeah, so I go I go to artists that make good positive music. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, Simple. Yeah. You know, and people that talk about like real stuff and how they deal with that real stuff. Um, not in a way that's like I'm gonna run away from it and I'm not gonna deal with it. I like accountable artists, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. That's so dope. How how does your daughter um like like what the daddy does? Like when you're creating music, does she come and yeah. listen? You know, does she sometimes catch you on the radio and say, Hey daddy, I had you on the radio? What yeah. is it like? um uh, yeah we create together so it's cool like she's learning i guess on her own time um i just want to give her as much like information as i can so i'm very open with regards to what i do and how i make music and all of that um sometimes she joins me sometimes she just does her own thing you know mm. uh which you is, mean she's already doing some pr- production yeah, I'm t- I'm t- I teach her, like, we play together and all that stuff. Wow. And then I record the random thing and just, like, keep the file. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep the file for, like, later on in life. But um, she's got a good sense of, like, beats. She understands tempo really well. Uh, I've never heard her sing off-key, so she understands her tuning is right. Um, but she's a kid, too, so there's no... I'm, I'm not, I don't put any pressure on her towards that, but she's... I think her artistic or creative side like expresses itself differently. Mm. Um, and it's just cool to watch her beca- be like all these things at like five years old. You Don't know? do that, please. Oh. It's just it's just it's just cool to 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 um watch her be like all these cool things at five years old. She loves gymnastics, she loves soccer, she loves cartoons, she plays PlayStation, she she likes drawing she likes making music she's yeah. just like she skateboards now yeah, we started yeah, skateboarding yeah. yeah like so um yeah just anything she wants to do creatively we do it so yeah it's cool and and in your opinion how is the south african music space like the industry i think from here from kenya from east africa we always look up to you know south south africa south, yeah. southern african industries and also western africa because yeah. there's obviously uh huge um level of just development in terms of yeah. uh institution setup even sampra is more of yeah. a working institution uh, in comparison to the kenya to their kenyan counterpart yeah. uh you know you have award ceremonies like summers which people respect you know you have certification for when yeah. your song goes platinum we're still trying to figure it out here as a matter of fact there's a launch of a recording industry of kenya just happening um which happened a couple of months ago so um but i find that even when you exist in an industry which is established to a certain level there will always sometimes be challenges here and there so for you how how, how's your experience you know in your industry um i understand that we're a young country okay you know like so i don't take some things personally and like i don't i don't like complaining also about things yeah um because it doesn't change much, yeah. you know? Uh, I understand that we're a young country. I'm grateful for the opportunities I've gotten because uh, I'm not really like a mainstream artist that's like, I don't make what maybe gets played on radio yes, or yes, whatever yes. since. Um, so I understand that, and but I still have a career, yeah. you know? So I've been lucky enough to travel and like build other connections elsewhere outside Mm. of South Africa, like even being here, you know, like I'm grateful for all of these things. And I understand that it's a, it's a a blessed position to be in. So yes, I've had challenges, but like, that's just life, man. Mm. You know, if you, you've got dreams or you've got something that you're trying to achieve, you're going to have to find your way around that. You're going to have to, you're going to have to navigate. So if, I'd be more worried if I didn't have to navigate. <laughs> and yeah. I was just like, pa, pa, <laughs> open, open doors, floodgates, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. then, then, yeah, then I'd feel like an industry plug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the thing, the thing is like, because I'm not that and because I'm just like, I, 
I create things in my house for myself, like play it for that for my friends, and then I eventually release them and like and people gravitate towards them. So that whole process for me just makes me like grateful of the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, that's why I love you, Muzi, so much, so much. And that's why I love this podcast because those who are listening sometimes also want them to see the other side and not just think that because certain artists who come on this podcast are super mainstream, that's what you have to do. Yeah. You know, you can be you and exist in your niche or yeah. industry without being mainstream or without playing on specific places, but that doesn't take away from who you are and what you do, and that shouldn't stop yeah. you from doing what you do. Yeah. That shouldn't stop you from being successful. You have been successful yeah. at your own terms. Yeah, like as long as as long as you have your own definition of what that is, um, I think things get messy when you start when you start comparing. Yeah, I think everything gets messy when you start comparing. Like, can't have the same story as someone yes, else. Um, yes, yes, yes. So you have to define these things yourself. Yeah, uh, I'm not saying it's easy. It's obviously, it's not an easy thing to do to follow your own voice. Of course. Um, in a world where you're you encourage. You're encouraged to be yourself until you actually become yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then they, <laughs> yeah, and then they want to discourage you for it because it's really hard to be yourself. You know, yeah, it's, a hard, it's, really it's not hard. an easy thing. So it's really hard because everyone is looking for a comparison. Because then they're like, oh, he's he's not he doesn't fit. You know, he doesn't yeah. fit. I, I shouldn't fit. I love that. You know, Jeez, I love so, that. So, so yeah, like for me, I don't have to have the biggest show, but I got a show. And I'm cool with that, <laughs> you know. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to be the biggest yeah. dick. Yeah. Dick. No, but how how does somebody like you then even become the African ambassador of Vans? Because yeah. I think that the the, the 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 perception is for for me or for you to be an ambassador of a certain thing, you have to have such a big following, and you have yeah. to be mainstream. You have to have ten number one records on the biggest stations, but you are not those yeah. typical um, ideals of a successful artist, and but yeah. you are successful and you got, you know, endorsements, yeah. collabs with the likes of Coldplay and Chris Martin. So how, how does that even happen? Like, that's quite interesting. Uh, how do you get that? Because I, f I focus on the art m more than I do on the selling. So when people meet me, I actually have a profile. You know, you could, I could be the biggest artist, the in the world, but maybe I've got three singles. I don't even have an album. I don't have an EP. I don't know how to make an album. But like now, I've got all these people saying I'm the best thing because I've made two, three songs. Yeah. I haven't built no catalog. I haven't. I don't know how to perform live or like on stage. But people are just like blowing smoke up my ass. Yeah. So for me, like I think, um, it's because of, I I take care of the music. You know, like that's it for me mm. you know and then the money and uh the success and all of that comes from that you know like like i've been able to have conversations with really like great musicians and they see me as a musician then mm. there's nothing there's nothing else there there's no fluff or clout or or anything else besides the fact that like i can connect to them as a fellow nerd as a fellow lover of music, yeah. you know? So that's how I want to build my life. Like, I I want to become the best artist I possibly can be. Yeah. So I want to always be a student of it. And that attitude has led me into a lot of rooms. You know, I've got, I've got a profile. Like, I've worked with a lot of people. I've developed as an artist. Mm. So... So yeah. basically, you're saying just being you, just having your music speak to in yourself and to whoever yeah. else got you where you are got you yes and even like even the vans endorsement because and 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 also like because i understand what i am we we don't wait for things to happen we go and make things happen okay you know okay. like i don't i understand that like i might i might not mm -hmm. have these songs that make sense for radio or for your festival or whatever but i go and make things happen where like, you I, know it will that's why you said i would i always love to navigate i navigate it you I know so it. i don't i don't sit at home and go ah oh, i know i'm amazing someone's gonna come and knock here and get me the opportunities i need no I, we go outside my team and i we're outside 
you know, we're trying to we're trying to find these opportunities, and sometimes if we can't find one, we make one. I love that. So yeah, I I, I make shit happen. Like like I could, I make shit happen. I love that. I love that. And I think that's my takeaway from this entire interview. Whoever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever you want to do make it happen yeah start it, start with what you have not what you what you think you need for you it's like it's like it's like waiting for the right uh pair of like soccer shoes before you start playing soccer yeah start playing soccer yeah and then as you play soccer you'll get the right shoes you exactly know what i'm saying i know what like you're saying. you can you can we used to we used to skateboard with like before even before I even had vans, mm. we used to skateboard with whatever sneaker was there. Right. And then you end up having holes here <laughs> and all of that stuff because you don't have the right shoe yet. Yes. But this, it doesn't mean that I it can't skateboard. It didn't stop you from, yeah. So, yeah, st- I, I, I started with what I had and I, I now I'm, I'm continuing with what I have. Fantastic. I'm not always in the future of, oh, I need this, I need this, I need that before I can do something. It's just ideas, ideas rule the world. I'm ideas driven. Hundred percent. Um, how many vans do you own? Oh, I have don't you know. even have you ever even counted them? It's no. like my mommy has a lot of um, chicken. Yeah. She has a farm. Yeah. And she just loves chicken. Yeah. I know, like you love vans. Yeah. So I'm doing the chicken vans. <laughs> I love chicken too. So, <laughs> so I asked her once, "Mom, do you know how many chicken?" And she was like, "I don't know," because then she has like. A batch of chi- 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 chicken, like yeah. hatching eggs, and another batch oh, okay. laying them, and then she has a batch of chicks. So it's a whole situation. Yeah. So one time I was counting them, and there were over one hundred. Yeah, I have a few that I like. I like classics, cla- like like bad classics. So those are by I like low cuts also. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know, I don't know how many I have. Are they hundreds? Could be. <laughs> <laughs> Can, or you, 99. can, can, can you can you just like pick a new van anytime or do they send them to you how um, does it work uh a bit of both you know it's like a partnership <laughs> thing um i don't i yeah it's like a it's like a, it's a relationship you know so if you if you want any vans you can get it yeah, yeah. oh my god that's so cool yeah that is I so just cool like the, the classics. That is so cool. It's just they perfect fit, man. They are comfortable to me. That like, is so cool. They go with so many outfits. They like, go with I your love style. The shoes so they go much. with the music. They go with yeah, your sense. I skate. Like it's just like man, That's they're just dope. so easy. That's dope. Yeah. Um. Any message you wanna share, you know, to your fans, to everybody yeah. listening, in um, relation to Muzi, the new album, or whatever it is. Uh. Thank you, you know. Um, the reason I I continue, I guess, like, oh, part of the reason why I continue, like, just trying to break new ground and trying to make like this music that I'm I make or continuing to build on that, is because of the support that people have like for me. Like, people support me a lot, and it allows me to continue to express freely. So that's why I'm I can't stop. You know, like, I think sometimes, like, some artists come to me and, and they tell me that, like, yo, yo, you need to continue holding the forward to that with the creative part of it because maybe they're in the industry stuff, in the in too deep with that. Um, so, yeah, I'm grateful for that. So thank you for anyone that has played any of my songs or, or came to see a show uh, or anyone that believes in me because it allows me to to be these things yeah you know it, it gives me that freedom so thank you and i want to thank you for coming to my city for picking my city as one of your stops for the umuzi listening party yeah and just for being yourself it's just so uh it's inspiring it's also a really big breath of fresh air yeah. uh because as a publicist and someone someone in the industry sometimes i get so tired with you know the mainstream and I don't know what is the radio station. Suck your soul out. Oh. <laughs> it's my soul. Suck your soul out, all that shit. Oh my god, it's it, it's so tiring, and uh, sometimes yeah. I'm just like, I wish um, we would encourage the audience to be more versatile because you know when yeah. a certain sound is the sound in the club and on the radio stations, everybody wants to play the same yeah. thing, and everywhere the the crowd then becomes. Um, 
What is it? Like, yeah, like. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> the hypnotized. That's the word. They yeah. become hypnotized by the thing that is being drilled in them. And then they don't think out of the box. And then they don't open up their ears or minds yeah. to any other sound. So it's a breath of fresh air for an artist like you to sound the way you do in this era and time. But not just to sound the way you do, but for you to also pick some of these almost forgotten genres and bring them back to life. The mass candies, the yeah. quieto, and just an African groove. The yeah. African groove is uh, African period, you yeah. know. Yeah. Whether you're from Southern, Eastern, it's West, the it's the same. You know, yeah. I hear that and it makes me so proud. And um, wh- what an honor to, to speak to you and for you to be here at VAP Access. So thank you so much, Mozi. Yeah. Mozi to the world. Time. Let's go. Let's Mozi go. to the world. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. It's been amazing to have Mozi right here on VAP Access. Make sure you stream his music um, and follow him on social media. The latest album is called Mozi 13 Fire Tracks. Wonderful collaborations. If you're listening to VAP Access, we'll be back every Tuesday at 7 a.m. East African time. Remember, this podcast is syndicated on Asian FM every Sunday from 7 to 8 p.m. And we are also in Ghana on MX24 TV every Tuesdays and Saturdays. Saturdays. It's been a pleasure to have you here on VIP Access. Please follow Aniko PR, Aniko TV, and VIP Access on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. Let's spread the beautiful music, the beautiful culture. And next week, I'll be back with another amazing guest. Thank you so much. You heard that? <laughs> All of that. <laughs> <laughs> VIP Access. VIP Access. With Aniko on Africa Loud.